George Orwell's 1984. He will answer all questions as requested. How many shows have you directed for Scorpio, and how would you say that this one's different? I've directed seven shows. One of the things that makes this one a little different is it's such an iconic piece. It's so well known, and it's interesting to see it how it's changed from its medium as a book into the play and, and being able to draw that out and express that and bring such an iconic piece that people know so well and show it with a new face is going to be very interesting. What can audiences <coughs> expect when they come to see 1984? Well, I think they can expect all the things that they have already know about the piece. It is still George Orwell's 1984, but obviously it's a stage treatment of that, so all of the anxiety, all the dread, and all those really poignant warnings that he put in that original piece are still there, only now they're sort of writ large right in front of you, and it's going to bring all that same sort of edge and excitement that you get for most Scorpio pieces. How would you say this show is relevant in today's political climate? Some of that speaks for itself, obviously, you know, we, we've seen what's happened in Britain and the States, you know, I mean, the fact of the matter is, when they elected Donald Trump in the States, they straight up elected a fascist. And we see the realities of that in places like Charlottesville, we see the people who are responding to the sort of ultranationalism and that fear, that isolationism, that anger. And we've seen all that before. And there's a reason why this piece in particular, and George Orwell in general, why his works are quoted time and again in the arts, in politics, in so many different mediums because it's there's so many universal and very poignant themes and warnings there. So one of the things that obviously is, is expressed a lot in both the book and also in the play is, is the way that the government, and in this case Big Brother, obfuscates truth. It's not that Big Brother necessarily overtly lies, although they do, it's the way they present those lies to the people in a way that they want to have them believe. They don't just say that red is blue, they make you want to believe it by, by allowing you to know that Big Brother is taking care of you by lying to you. They, they change language, they limit language. There's a character in the play who's also in the book whose entire job is to go through the dictionary and remove extra words. Take words that don't necessarily need to be there so that we can compress them so that instead of having seven words that mean good we only have one and in so doing you limit people's capability of expressing themselves so that you wouldn't even be able to think against Big Brother because the vocabulary doesn't exist for you to express that and again we we, we do see that every now and then which is where that threat of censorship comes from it's where that threat of media spin and hype and sensationalism comes from and so those warnings, while they may be exaggerated, are not untrue. And I think there isn't a better time to, to retell this story and let the word out. What kind of challenges are you looking forward to with the show? Well, as I've mentioned, I think one of the big challenges will be knowing that it is so iconic and so well known, but of course there are differences being a stage treatment. So I'm really looking forward to making sure that we're true to that piece and we're true to the reality of what George Orwell was writing while still presenting it in a different medium. And the fact of the matter is there's some really heavy and some really poignant stuff that happens in this script. So being able to do that in a way that is powerful without being distasteful, I think, I think is going to be a challenge and it'll be an exciting one. Thank you. That will be all. I love you, big brother.